Hi, this is Kevin with Garrison Dental, and we are in the office of Dr. Matt and Shot in beautiful Beverly Hills, California. And Dr. Matt is going to tackle effective methodology for restoring back-to-back -back restorations. There's a lot of different ways, and we thought we'd have Dr. Jad share his with us. So taking a look at this configuration here, I, I'm pretty simple when it comes to these things. I like to do one tooth at a time. There's a lot of advantages. I like to make sure I can finish the proximal margin with a 12 blade. There's no reason to uh, eliminate that possibility when we have open access. I like to be able to contour the proximal surface a little if I need to after I'm done. And when you do one at a time, you have that benefit. So. Uh, even in, when it comes to an MOD. So let's take a look at this example here. And in a case like this, I'm going to place the matrix band on the mesial and the distal, but I'll put my ring on the contact that I'm working on first, and then I'll m reposition it to the other side when I have finished building up the wall. So let's go ahead and do that. So as an example, I'm gonna place this matrix band and since I'm usually using isolation, one of the important steps here is to make sure I get between the rubber dam and the uh, tooth margin. So in order to do that, it's really important to either pull the dam out of the way or when you get close here, you have to use another instrument to kind of retract the dam lightly and get this matrix band between. And pre-curving pre a little bit like this, helps a lot, but the number one thing that's helped me get this done effectively is assistance help. You know, I've tried to do this on my own a lot and had a lot more trouble. Now if I'm doing one side, my assistant can take this other side with cotton pliers or a composite instrument and help get that down between the dam and the tooth and then it'll hold itself in place. Then when we do the other side, sometimes I cut it a little bit shorter so that they don't overlap. You're gonna see here, as we come in that they're gonna be overlapping a little bit sometimes. And if that's the case, I'll cut one a little bit shorter so that they don't overlap on the buckle and lingual. But if it fits and we don't need to adjust, that's fine. And I'll place this here and just use a wedge lightly to keep it in place. But I'll focus on restoring the distal contact first. So the purpose of this wedge at this point is strictly to keep my matrix in place. And when I apply my dentin bond, oh, so you can see it's overlapping here. So when it overlaps like this, I'm gonna reposition. There you go. And so it's my purpose of this uh, wedge right now is mainly to keep the dam sealed, prevent moisture from coming in and prevent my dentin bonding agent from uh, escaping and puddling you know, beneath the margin and creating a ledge or excess or anything like that. I don't find you need to wedge very significantly with this system because the matrix band thickness and the rings wedging effect gives me a contact that is desirable without heavy wedge. So whenever I'm restoring, my goal with the wedge is only to improve the gingival seal. Placing the ring in, there's a couple different things that I think are really important. One, when you come straight down, you're very likely to hit the band, move it, displace it, or create a problem. So what I like to do is come towards the contact that I'm trying to restore. So in this case, I'm going to go behind it and slide into place from the distal so that if I contact the band, the tendency is gonna be to push it against the tooth, not to push it away, push it down, fold it, crease it, anything like that. Now that I have the ring in place, I will use a small round condenser and just make sure that I have contact. It's not exactly burnishing. I'm just kind of making sure the band hasn't creased or folded. I'll inspect the band just slightly to make sure I have a, I have a good seal. Um, also, another tip, when you see like excess here, so one, I can kind of fold it over. So I have a little bit of space there. I can fold it over and the other thing I can do is pack Teflon tape 
into this area. And another way you can deal with this that I do sometimes is either flowable or opal dam. You can put in here, hold it and cure it so that you really get a nice contour there. But usually if I have a contour like this, I'm okay with doing the finishing with a 12 blade and I'd rather make sure that I have a little extra to work with in contour than to not have enough in the margin areas. So let's say we've restored this contact now. I've already done my dentin bonding agent, my, my etch prime bond or my prime and bond, depending on what system you're using. And I already have that all down. First, I would fill up this wall and I would basically build up this distal contour. Then I would move this matrix band to the other side and build up that wall as well. Then I finish the central portion doing cusp by cusp so I get a nice anatomy and a good final result. So let's say I've built up the distal and I already have my dentin bonding agent down. Now I'm gonna move my band to this other side. Same thing, I'm gonna come towards it. So in this case, I'm approaching from the mesial, making sure that if anything happens, see here, it slipped a little bit back and I created a gap. So now I'm gonna open again, pinch a little bit, and do the same thing because I don't wanna have that overly contoured proximal surface. So this is the challenge when you're doing multiple teeth. Oftentimes you have your matrix band kind of a little over contoured because there's nothing to stop it. But I find that it's good to have it this way. If I need to make it less, I can pack a little Teflon tape here. But what I usually do is finish this way and then use a soft flex disc with easy contour to polish and contour, 12 blade, everything like that here. Then I'll proceed to doing the next tooth. I've tried placing another matrix band in here to hold this contour, but I usually just find there's too much going on and I really, really do like to take a 12 blade and finish this margin down here. So if I'm using two matrix bands, if I'm using a technique that does both sides at the same time, I usually end up trying to favor convenience over quality and I'm really in favor of trying to get the best quality even if it means a little more work or a few more steps.